What's up guys? I trust you are well. All Scan 12 is back again for another video about how to build a Revit family. For today's video, I will show you how to create the serrated tuck plate with circular void Revit family. If you are new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. Also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss out on my new videos. Previously, we have created the serrated bottom plate with a slatted hole. If you missed that video, I will leave a link to the description for you to watch it later or you can click the link that will appear right now on the top right hand corner of your screen. Let us get started. Open Revit, then search and open the serrated bottom plate Revit family we have created previously. Select the slotted boy, then delete it as we no longer need it. Delete it also from your project browser. Next, select the gray color element, then hide it by pressing HH on your keyboard as a shortcut command. Then select the serrated teeth boy and delete it as well. Next, from your project browser, select the serrated bottom plate teeth boy and drag it to the bottom face of the plate. Then we will flip it by pressing the flip icon as shown. Next, go to the reference level and we will align and lock the serrated teeth boy center line to the host center line. Let's give it a test. Now that we are dealing with the top plate, let's name the family and let's call it Serrated Plate Teeth Boy. I just realized now that I can have one Teeth Boy family for top and bottom plate. Next, let's get rid of bottom wording and replace it by top wording. Before creating this video, I did a test on how to model this and have created already the shared parameters that we will be needing to save a little bit of time. Next, we will be replacing the parameters to refer with serrated top plate length, width, and thickness rather than keeping it as serrated bottom plate length, width, and thickness. Do the same thing for the material and replace it with serrated top plate material parameter. Then open the material editor, right click and let's rename this as serrated top plate material. Then let's change the color to red. Click apply and OK to exit the material editor. Then click apply and OK to exit the family editor. What we will do next is to create a circular void family using metric generic model base based family template. While at reference level, create a circular extrusion, make the dimension live, and we will assign a parameter. We can set this parameter as family parameter and let's call it circular void radius. Give it a test. And let's give it a type name. Let's create a new parameter, 
as a family parameter and let's call it circular void diameter. Then let's create a formula by saying radius is equals to diameter divided by 2. Let's create a new type. Next, go to the front view and create a horizontal reference plane below the reference level. Then select the element and drag it to the reference plane and lock it as shown. Next, add a dimension from reference level to the reference plane. Then select the dimension and we will assign a family parameter and let's call it plate thickness. Click the family editor and let's adjust the values. Then click apply and ok to accept the changes. Make sure you tick the checkbox saying cut with voids when loaded. Then save the file and we will call it circular void. Then go to the 3D view, select the element, and we will convert this from solid to void. Next, using the cut geometry tool, select the slab, then the void, and we now have created the void. Save it. Load it to the project, then place it to the top face of the plate as shown. Since we haven't ticked the shared checkbox, we can now link the circular plate thickness parameter to the host serrated top plate thickness parameter. Then click apply and ok to accept the changes. Then give it a test. Next, go to the reference level and we will align and lock the circular void center line to the host center line. Next, in order for us to control the circular void size, go to the 3D view, select the void family, then from the label drop down menu, select add parameter. We will create one and we will call it circular void size. Then select family type under type of parameter. And in the category, choose generic model. Let's group it under visibility. Once we are happy with the test, we can now save this family and let's call it serrated top plate. Next, we will add few more parameters to control the position of the serrated top plate with respect to the serrated bottom plate.
next go to the front view delete the dimension and we will do some adjustment add the dimension from reference level to the reference plane as shown then we will assign a parameter called offset from base select the tip point family and we will update the work plane from reference level to the reference plane as shown Next, add or copy the reference plane, add the dimension, select the dimension, and assign a parameter. Let's call it serrated bottom plate thickness. Add the dimension, select the dimension, and assign a parameter called serrated top plate thickness. Next, select the element in red, drag the control handle upward a little bit, then accept remove constraints, then drag and lock it to the reference plane. Now it's time to give it another test. As you can see, it is now working parametrically. Looks like the tip point did not cut the bottom part of the plate. To fix this, select the tip point, then click Edit Work Plane and select the bottom face of the plane. Save the file, and that concludes our video for today. Kindly support my YouTube channel by smashing that thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on my new videos. Have a great day! God bless and thanks for watching. Cheers!